Hello and welcome to another podcast episode thing. We have Rowan, our co-host. He is back. Um, I would say by popular demand, but only about 50 people have watched the <laughs> first few. So is what it is. It's going well. So today we are going to be talking about how to optimize your first few years of training. Um, and this is probably something that uh, Rowan and myself did not do. Um, and I think a lot of kind of lads, more to the point, and, and females for that matter, don't don't make the most of those first few kind of years of training. So we're going to be looking at kind of the the five year time 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 gap time span, um, and how to how to optimize that to make the most progress. Um, how to grow. not make the mistakes that we do. Yes, 100%, because there was a lot of mistakes made, I must, must admit. However, I did make a bit of progress. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. So talk us through your first few years of training. Like, what was your, I want to say, what was your approach? Probably wasn't an approach, but like, how did you get into it? And then what did you do? So I started <laughs> off training when I was 20. So kind of late to the party, mate. Ah, no, God, oh, almost Rule nine years one, ago now. How to optimise, start early. Start at 13. First, just start when you're like 12. Get out oh, the womb with a bag of rice on your back. Um, <laughs> carry on. Um, so I was coming from being like a bigger lad rather than a skinnier one. So mm-hmm. my general thought process with going to the gym was for losing weight and not so much get massive but just super toner kind of yeah like just (laughs) feel better about how it looked so i went to the local gym which thank god happened to be a local bodybuilding gym because that's that's then where i fell in love with bodybuilding good the the initial like training by myself atrocious uh, because the, the because the thought process was let's not be fat, I would hammer cardio before the session, do that for about half hour, 40 minutes, and then go train. And I did that probably six days a week, maybe with one, like one day off. Good shift. Um I did something like that. I don't know how I did it. I couldn't do that now. No. Because I, I was running as well. I was doing like, uh, like interval hill sprints. I think if um, I tried that based now, based on the research you know now, based on the research you know now, uh, mitochondria efficiency. That's for another oh pod. God, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you came at it from that angle. I came at it from kind of a sports mm. background. Um, Mum was more like typical rugby lad. Felt like I needed to bench press to be good at rugby. Um, got injured. Wasn't good at rugby. Uh, and then all I could do was um, train. So really did just love fall in love with training um albeit i fell in love with kind of bro the bro style of training so i was a chess mondays person and i was a back tuesdays person however i didn't skip leg day because of my injury i kind of fully rehabbed my leg so i had a full knee reconstruction so that meant i couldn't skip leg day however i fell for everything everything that could have gone wrong for like a first five years i probably did wrong um, I had no real concept of anything. All I knew was that just training was life. So yeah. I just needed to train and I get big. Um, I did understand that food would help me get there, um, but I was a I was a perma bulker. So so I, yeah. I I got I got pretty big. Like I put I pushed body weight pretty early. Um, so I, I've got a story to tell about USN. So you know USN's like supplement company. Yeah, they've got this like hyperbolic anabolic tub <laughs> protein thing whatever it's called so one of those yeah. shapes is topping like 900 calories i'd have three of them a day and oh food <laughs> and food oh so like oh at the age of like 16 17 18 on a daily basis i was probably having about five thousand calories oh yeah just absolutely just just churning through calories just an absolute calorie machine um but yeah, training was good. It obviously, is what it is. But uh, but those are the mis- some of the mistakes I've made. Um, but now we're going to kind of talk about how we're going to like how we would recommend 
um, people approach those first few years of training because arguably they're the best years of your life for training. You'll go from fat to thin, fat to muscly, or you'll go from thin to muscly in it, 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 at a rate of knots that you will never be able to replicate ever again. So oh, gotcha. it would make sense. Um, and I would advise everyone to try and make the most of it. Um, and if I could go back, um, I'd change a few things. I wouldn't change some things because um, I think some things kind of did instill a good amount of kind of discipline, training knowledge, understanding of like from doing something wrong, you very often realize how to do it right later on in the line and realize, and then you can use that to kind of guide your decisions. So in terms of training, what are you thinking for the first five years of training? Well, I'm not, I'm not asking you to plan out a five year meadow cycle. Okay. Here. Okay. Like how would you approach your first, your first kind of year in the gym? Well, I think initially the response you'll get from, any kind of stimulus is going to be so great that going in again, this is speaking kind of optimally um, going in and potentially doing full body a few times a week where you're more trying to learn the movement patterns initially will be much more beneficial than just going in and trying to hammer every single body part like Monday, chest, Tuesday, back, at least trying to put some effort into learning or be it squats aren't for everyone at Good least understanding yeah. how to do things yeah i think like yeah um, and like learning those motor skills to be able to then because it is a learning it is a learning process and those and those skills will stand you in good stead for later on because hopefully you you've got the kind of mindset of us at some point wanting to be advanced and and to get to kind of that advanced level it's just skin in the game so it would make sense that those first few years are laying the foundations and whether that is you kind of try like deadlifting, benching, squatting, like you said, those basic patterns will, I think, um, really allow you to allow the, uh, lay the foundation, sorry, for kind of a solid um, ability to like move your body within space because everyone sees it now. If, like, if you're in the gym, you know someone who's just started lifting because their bench looks like Bambi, like it's just yep. all over the place. They're wobbling around, and that's not it's not a bad thing. But time under that experience will make it a lot better. And if you can like make that really good at the start, it'll be really good at the end, and it will only get better. And then it's just one thing you don't need to worry about because it's probably something I didn't do with like pressing. Like I was very on it with my deadlifting and my squatting um, because of like the knee rehab. And because I just wanted to be strong at deadlifts. However, with pressing, I think like I listened to the wrong advice um, and like thought that I had to bench press and stuff and got into bad habits. And I've never really been able to shift. Yes, I'd be able to change my form, but I, when obviously I'm handling heavier loads, I always resort back to type. So like those little bad habits come in, um, whether that's kind of internal rotation, stuff like that. So yeah, I think like, like you said, you can get away from the minimum effective dose. And, I, and that's what I'd say. And that's one of the things I wish I'd done. Um, yeah. Because I was just doing like all of the volumes, like just everything. everything. Like chest was just like flat bench, decline bench, incline bench, incline machine bench, chest fly, dips, then triceps. Um, so like, like we spoke about in the last pod, like, you're going to have like volume landmarks that you need to work towards. And I'm not saying you need to be like super sciencey about it, but just don't overdo it. Just focus on quality work. Um, but also you need to understand that it might take you, like I said in the last podcast as well, um, some time to develop that accuracy. So you might need slightly higher volume. Um, so this is where kind of like monitoring things and tracking things to some extent would help. But like, yeah, I'd say probably a full body split or upper lower if you're able to if you're able to kind of manage it because chances are people who just start want to be in the gym because they've got that kind of initial love for it. So people might struggle doing like a full body split every other day because you're not in the gym all the time. So again, it's completely person yeah. dependent, but I just think make sure you are developing those motor skills. Um, and just stick to something 
like don't just kind of change the workout every time because that's something I did like well I know I definitely benched I incline benched and I decline benched every session but just make sure you stick to it over time and make sure that's getting better because if it's not getting stronger over time like what is happening like something is going really wrong if you're not progressing over time especially in that first year because that first year is like magic um in terms of growing muscle in terms of performance um what would you be thinking about in terms of food and i know it's quite hard because obviously it's going to be completely person dependent um because like you said you came in from like a i was going to say chubbier i'm going to say chubbier chubbier position and i came in from like a string bean perspective um so then i think that would dictate what you do um if it's kind of younger and a younger individual i'd probably say go in a calorie surplus um because like we said like those first few years is just when it's going to be magic and magic is going to happen so it would make sense to support that with calories at least uh hover and maintenance if you are coming from say <clears throat> the start point that i did where you are say bigger you can definitely change your body composition quite easily by eating around maintenance yes because you're still saying you can build muscle in a deficit which i think is what i luckily managed to do a little bit on the least but yeah maximizing that through staying at maintenance calories, eating in a surplus. Plus as well, the younger you are when you're starting, you're probably still at home. The access to food you might have is just whatever your parents give you. Mm. And so, as long as you make sure like protein is relatively high, like, yeah. and, and then you're getting probably calorie dense meals from your parents, if you have the luxury of that, like it's the recipe made in heaven because... Mm probably not going to get like a cooked meal for the rest of your life if you leave home so well unless you cook it obviously um but delivery is a good thing um yeah i think like nutritionally is an interesting one i think like you'll need to understand i just think get get to a place where everything's progressing body weight slowly over time um and performance um because arguably like i said we want your performance to be going up at all points really especially in those first few years because you will get strength gains that are kind of you won't be able to match um in terms of the nice thing i think that's the nice thing at least definitely now where there is much more information out there on progressing lifts eating like when i started instagram wasn't really a thing there wasn't that much information readily available outside of like bodybuilding.com forums so and, I was, and that information was not always legit. Oh, God. For months, I was not eating carbs past six. The only carbs I allowed Same, myself yeah. was like spinach. It was awful. Is, is spinach a carb or is it? I swear it's got a high well, protein is. content. <laughs> I think I was just like, oh, carbs are rice or potatoes. So as long as I don't yeah. eat them, but I can eat I can eat bags of spinach, it's fine. Yeah, just like, I've just got the micros in, but... yeah. Just couldn't poo. <laughs> just constipated. <laughs> uh, sadly, I don't really remember my garments from oh, eight good. years ago. <laughs> didn't, you didn't track. Didn't track it. Um, yeah. yeah so, like, my I diary. Think, I think nutritionally, like, yeah, just understand that there will be information out there that's good, and I think there probably is more good information out there now than bad information mm. if you're looking in the right places, um, yeah. which is obviously part of the battle, but get those calories up get them get get body weight increasing over time um but if you're kind of a skinny fat which some people are um and by skinny fat we kind of mean not 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 massive but you've got like that kind of look about you that i often very much associate with someone who's just not been very active or trained ever um and i think that's just the harsh truth of it. It, it, it of course as humans we need like labels so here we go we've got skinny fats now which is like a subbreed of people um but the reality is like you've not got any muscle and you've got a little bit of chub on you there we go so i it depends how skinny fat you are but i would potentially think about kind of like you said recomping getting body fat down a little bit and and seeing if you can kind of change that composition because really, we don't want to be in a deficit. Too, we don't want to be in too much of a deficit, too much of an aggressive deficit, that is. Because, um, And this ties into 
more like a five-year plan. Like I'd be thinking of those first five years. You don't want to be near a calorie deficit that at all. Um, because like, like we said, things can happen outside of that calorie deficit during that window. Um, and so that's I, the, what, that's one of the big kind of mistakes I then made. Uh, started training at 20, entered my first contest at 22, entered my second contest at 23. And yeah, definitely limited the amount of progress that I could have made um, by doing that and kind of going into those very aggressive deficits. Mm. Um, and you see that quite, and it's gone, and it's not uncommon, like, especially mm. in kind of competitive scene, like if you, if you do kind of fall in love with it and you fall in love with it intensely and quickly, you very soon get sucked into the, the kind of thought of, right, do I need to compete to kind of prove my worth or kind of, is that, is that what we do now? Is that like you go to the gym, you compete? Like, is that, is that what it is? Um, and I would always recommend that unless you're quite genetically gifted um, or you started, like we said, like when you were 13, I wouldn't be competing as a team um, or I'd be competing like your last year as a team. Because, like, honestly, like I'm seeing like 16 year olds on the on the stage, and it's like, like, okay, congrats, like, class, like, great effort. Not taking anything away from you, but you're still a team for like three more years. Could you be, could you be in a calorie surplus for another three years and then come back as a 19 year old better? Um, yes. The other, and, is, the other thing as well is during those kind of earlier years, you're still growing going through that maturation process one thing that has been shown especially in a lot of literature to hinder your growth is energy restriction if you're not giving yourself the food or energy that you need it is definitely going to slow you down from potentially developing as you may have done normally 100 percent. and like if we think about like your testosterone during those years are going to be huge and one thing we know from a, a natural contest prep is your testosterone will be rock bottom and then it will not just be rock bottom for the time that you're dieting for the show it'll be rock bottom for like five six months afterwards um trust me i'm going for it um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you're gonna get no more detail um so it's not it's it's not just the in terms of contest prep it's not just the case of like ah, oh, uh i need to do this and i i wouldn't feel that social pressure because like i managed to to resist it till I was 27 and then I decided to do it at 27 I think that definitely kind of stood me in good stead because the problem is when you first start lifting you get sucked into the kind of egotistical mindset of like I am the biggest person like I am sick like what well, most lads do like let's be honest like you're in the mirror you're curling you've probably got a vest on um you've booked IB with that, boys. that's me nowadays yeah, that's you now. Like, um, <laughs> you've booked Ibiza with the boys, or you're getting Magaluf or something. Like, outside of COVID, like you're feeling you're feeling yourself, okay. And then you're like, well, mm. I could get on this stage. Like, you look at people, you're like, I look like that. But I think it's a little bit of a, a mis a misjudgment for a lot of people. And I do think it's kind of, if you do want to compete, maybe junior is probably the best area, probably the best time. Um, but then again, like, it, those things still apply. All those things still apply. Like, I do think of the best people in terms of muscle mass the ones that have never really thought about dieting and i think in terms of nutrition and stuff i think and training i think what you need to do is find a way of training and a lifestyle that you actually buy into because if you, lots of people like speak to me like lots of my clients speak to me and say like how are you so on it with things like this like nutrition training and i just say like I have just become so disciplined with it because I've found something that I really like and I wouldn't have stuck to it if I didn't like it. So what you need to find early on is a way of doing it, doing this fitness stuff that you like. Um, it doesn't have to be bodybuilding. Like we're, we are quote unquote bodybuilders, like, but there, there's so many different avenues that like, right. If you try prepping your meals and you really don't fucking like it, like, you're not, you're not going to sustain that for five years. So don't try and kid yourself and put that pressure on yourself yeah. that you just hate. Like you wake up, you just hate what you're doing. Because um, on the other hand, like you're never going to compete with someone like me who loves that. Like I'll wake yeah. up at five in the morning and I'll go for a walk in the dark. Like, like you, like, do you know what I mean? You can, it's never going to work. So I think 
yeah that's that's a big thing it's like pick and choose as well like because you're going to make progress whatever in those first few years but like I would always say like double down on the things that work and I think like a progressive training program is one of those things like 100% I think like a calorie surplus or at least maintenance with good protein is there I think some form of education like if you're really interested in it some form of education around the topic um so that you're not just so you're always learning from the right people because there's a lot of good stuff out there like we said um and then just pick something that you're going to stick to for a long time because it is just time under tension it's literally a lifetime under tension like the more you can do of it for a long period of time the better you will be um in terms of muscle mass in terms of performance um and your ability to train um but yeah i don't know if you have anything else to add on that really man so i think you kind of get the nail on the head with trying to instill like almost lifestyle changes or habit changes that are easy enough to stick to and even if that's just trying to eat slightly less processed foods like more protein training more consistently finding our program that you enjoy following but as well because it is so new to you to get to the gym albeit we laugh about the mistakes that we made training wise i definitely think that's what has attributed to me knowing what i enjoy doing now and what i don't enjoy like 100% as much as i would love to be able to train through reps from failure for everything i just don't enjoy that and mm. even if I was I programmed it, I know that I would accidentally just push it a little bit too far. So I think within reason, maybe don't try German volume training. It's not needed. Oh, talk of German volume. I've got a funny story about German volume training. Oh, God. I'll um, talk about it in a minute. <laughs> but at least it is your kind of time to find what you do enjoy. And then when you do enjoy it, committing it isn't an atrocity. It's just stick, it's stick not with it shit. yeah stick yeah. with it and kind of so yeah right i think i think that's good and i think like it's a very broad topic i think like it's very hard to kind of just discuss it for a long period of time without like a case study kind of um mm. unless we like paint a kind of what's it called not an anime like a persona for you and we would walk through it and i mean we could do that but i think like the the basics quote unquote we've spoken about and i think they will just get you very far um so yeah. now let's move on to what was the worst thing you did in your first five years of training i think this will be a good one so i'm not the worst thing or few like if you've got a few i'll give you time to think um i'll, I'll go first so um like rowan just mentioned he just dropped it in uh german volume training Funnily enough, it's still doing the rounds somehow. Um, basically, German volume training, or what I did of it, was 10 sets of 10. Um, and that's how I programmed it. I say programmed. I just did 10 sets of 10 on every exercise. Um, and like I said, that was quite a few exercises. Um, so I did 10 sets of 10 of squats, all to failure. Um, sometimes about a minute in between. Um, 10 sets of 10 on bench, 10 sets of 10 on incline bench, 10 sets of 10 on flies. You get the picture. Um, and it was safe to say I was ruined. Absolutely <laughs> ruined. Um, so yeah, my, 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 my recoverable volume was not, was, you will be glad to know, was not 100 sets, 100 reps of squats. Um, and I wasn't weak either. Like at that period, I was squatting like 100, 100 kilograms, which is, which is all right um for someone with a peg leg um but yeah like that is one of my biggest regrets um alongside never having a day off um because when you couple german volume training with never having a day off um it's probably less than optimal or less than ideal um so that's one of the things i would recommend not to do is don't follow something you've seen in the magazine that some juice head has written about um or an Olympic weightlifting team who are also on juice follow um, and they're elite athletes and you're just a scrawny little kid in the gym. <laughs> what, what's one of your, what's one of your shockers? Well, I think the worst thing 
is, as I kind of touched on right at the start, it was performing sprints before, and these were like minute on, minute off, increasing the incline every minute for probably 30 minutes in total, and then trying to train afterwards. Thankfully, that didn't last for too long. And I burnt out. Uh, it was, I don't even know how I did it. So I was wearing like a big oversized hoodie as well. I sweated through it. Awful. I've still got it now. It okay, looks disgusting. Oh, I, I don't even want to go near it now. <laughs> I hope you've washed it. Um, I, many times. <laughs> good, good. Nutritionally, what were your worst mistakes? Oh, definitely under eating, severely under eating. I would have a chicken breast and maybe like 50 grams dry weight rice twice a day. Or the only veg I ate was spinach, mainly in the first year. Uh, I don't even know what I, I probably had like protein oats for breakfast without adding anything to it, just protein and oats. And I think it was massively underrated. No. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, like, mine was like very much like two ends of the spectrum. So like I went on like that perma bulk, like I said, for the first few years and then kind of went on like an aggressive, aggressive diet, like no periodization, just absolute one day I was like, well, I'm dieting. I think I broke up with a girlfriend. I think I broke up with a girlfriend in like six four. That's why I competed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so I broke up with a girlfriend in sixth form and I was like, you know what, fuck this, I'm getting lean. Go and I'll be for the boys. <laughs> um, nice. So I just lost so much weight. That absolute, like, when, I think I went from like 5,000 calories straight in at 1,500, fasted cardio, um, no carbs after six, um, all of that. Um, lost a shit ton of weight, but probably lost all of my move gains. Um, which I wouldn't recommend. So stay away from dieting or aggressive dieting like that. Don't need to do it. Um, what else have I fallen for? In terms of training, back to training, I think like the worst thing I did was like I've already touched on is like not to having an actual program um, and having no real consistency in that program. Um, I think obviously there's no ends of how complicated things could be um but picking a decent program is quite easy nowadays like there's apps that like gymshark apps not bad as long as you're doing it like um consistently um and i just so think that, that's the one aspect that's the one aspect i got quite lucky with i became obsessed with a canadian bodybuilder called ben pakolsky who was very much about feeling the muscle and everything being perfect proprioception um, yeah yeah, yeah so, so i followed his mi40 program which like it was a fine program i definitely think it helped me develop like an understanding of how to actually contract muscles and train whatever i'm aiming to yeah but it wasn't the best yeah, it's kind of one of those things like we've, we developed some good habits accidentally from the process, um, but we also definitely did some bad things. Um, oh, there was one thing I was going to say, but I've completely, it's completely gone out of my head. Um, but one thing I really, I, it's tough, I know you feel the same, it's like because we absolutely pummeled ourselves in our first few years, our ability to pummel ourselves now is quite good um yeah. which which i'm quite happy about because i went through that kind of gbt general volume training and absolutely buried myself i know i knew for quite a long while that i could push myself hard um and i also built up my capabilities in terms of like my ability to di direct spinal load which means like put weight on your back and and then do it again and do it again because i know a lot of people i have a lot of clients that they do one set of deadlifts and they're like, that's their direct spinal loading for the week. And I'm like, well, what, have you got to sit down and do all your yeah. other exercises? Yes, they do. But on the other hand, I can handle quite a lot of, well, not right now, but I can handle quite a lot of direct spinal loading. And I'm not saying it will mean that you have a better back or you have more muscle, but it will definitely kind of 
give you more possibilities potentially because you'll be able to do more um again from a volume standpoint but you you're the same aren't you because your erectors are just erect oh honestly like my squats were atrocious but my lower back still are atrocious the most oddly developed thing <laughs> in the world that's why like, i like I never have to really worry about my lower back if I compete again. I don't need to work it. It's just, it's, it's I've built enough muscle there it? to last it forever. Yeah. It's like, it's like a microwave on his back, um, which oh. is a good thing. I think that absolutely. I said mm-hmm. you said microwave because there's a microwave behind you. And I was trying to, my vocabulary is uh, uh, missing today. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think we've kind of covered everything, mate. And I think like, this is a shorter pod this week because I mean, hmm. like with everything, it depends. Like it does depend, but yeah. the basics still apply. Get on a program that's decent, stick to it over time, get better at it. Make sure you learn the movements, um, movement patterns. That is not necessarily movements, but movement patterns. Um, don't diet unless you really, 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 really need to. Um, and what else? And, and just make sure you're kind of building that lifestyle that you actually can stick to. Um, and capitalize on being at home. Get your mum to cook you some spags oh, or definitely. something. Or your dad, because anyone can cook nowadays. But, Gen- um, gender equality. Yeah, gender equality, 2020. Alex. Oh, it's 2021, isn't it? Brilliant. It's been a long <laughs> day. Right then, so thanks for watching. If you have any kind of questions that you want answered in the pod, let us know. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, take care.